If you're wanting to learn how to make Slap Yo Mama biscuits using 100% whole grain, freshly milled at home, then stay tuned. This video is for you. Hey y'all, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia. Who doesn't love a good biscuit? And homemade is definitely the best. My husband is a huge fan of the Hardee's biscuit and really, who isn't? And unfortunately, it is super hard to compete with when you're trying to do a healthier alternative, especially grinding your own wheat here at home. It's, it's quite difficult to compete with. I spent years trying to find a good biscuit recipe and I have failed many times many times and while my chickens were a huge fan of the biscuits my husband and me and the rest of my family not so much i just was not getting that light fluffy biscuit you know that's just buttery melts in your mouth and oh is the perfect biscuit for biscuits and gravy so i gave up for a while and i just stopped making biscuits and then i discovered Jill Wingers from the Prairie Homestead, her biscuit recipe, it's listed in her cookbook, the Prairie Homestead cookbook. And I will definitely link that below. You can see it right here in the screen. And a big problem with biscuit recipes I had tried before, is just the recipe itself was just not that great. Um, and I tried her recipe. I first did it with store-bought flour, just regular store-bought flour as the recipe said, and it was so delicious. Finally, I had a really great recipe to work with, and then I had to work with it a little bit more to modify it to freshly mill wheat. And I can now say that my biscuits are not only delicious, they are soft, and they are 100% whole grain. No store-bought flour in these babies. After you try this recipe, I promise you will not touch another biscuit in a can, wop biscuit, whatever you wanna call it. You'll never touch it again, and you can drive by Hardee's knowing that you can compete with them right here at home with a much healthier version of the biscuits. So again, check out the description box below, and I will link Jill Winger's video that she has done about with her original biscuit recipe, as well as a link book to her cookbook, which I highly recommend, as well as my own recipe and technique. Um, modified from hers for whole grains below as well. Now let's put your hair up so it doesn't get in the food and grab your apron. You are definitely gonna need an apron with this one. And let's get started. Here is what we are going to need. You first of course need a grain mill. Again, for all my stuff that I love to use the most, I will definitely link in the description box below along with my recipe. So be sure to check that out. To cut in the butter, you need a pastry cutter or two butter knives. Or I have learned that I can do wonders with my bad boy with Miss Betsy Bosch over here. This is a Bosch Universal Mixer. And I discovered that whenever I use the whisk attachments, I am, it incorporates the butter very well and way faster <laughs> than I can do by hand. I use the whisk attachments and then I switch over to the dough hook, which we'll see later um, whenever I do whenever I mix the butter into my dry ingredients. And again, we'll see that later. But again, if you do not have a Bosch mixer, that's fine. A pastry cutter, two knives, old fashioned way, totally fine. The berries that we're gonna be using is soft white wheat, berry. wheat berries. Do not use a hard red wheat berry. Soft white wheat berries are generally grown in the south because they like the heat and they like how wet it is down here. Um, your hard reds are generally grown up north where it's colder and not wet like it is down in the south. That's why the south is known for our biscuits. The north is known for their yeast spreads solely because of the wheat that, that grows in the different areas. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Another fun fact is if you have made biscuits um, from store-bought flour, usually I was always taught the best flour to use was lilies. And if you notice on lilies, it states that it is with soft white wheat flour, where your all-purpose flours are usually a hard wheat. So if you've been trying out biscuits, they haven't been that great, check the flour. But for this, for whole grain, we're using soft white wheat berries. You also need two tablespoons of baking powder. Secret ingredient, y'all, 
four tablespoons of sugar. Yes, sugar, and I actually use cane sugar. And then two teaspoons of fine salt. And if you've already looked at Jill Winger's recipe, you will notice that I have already doubled these ingredients. And there is a reason why I doubled them, not just for the size of my family. Um, you'll see later why I have doubled, except one ingredient. The next ingredient is you need butter, real butter. It needs to be cold and we're gonna be cubing it and you'll see later into small pieces so we can incorporate it into the flour. You need to use real butter. You can use lard. I have used it successfully. It works better cold, but you need butter or lard. For the love of all that is good, do not ruin your biscuit recipe by using margarine. Ugh. Don't use margarine. You need to use butter or lard. It's just, yeah, you're going through all this work. Don't, just don't do it. If you want to do it in your personal time, fine. I still think it ruins everything, but whatever. It's up to you. And then the last ingredient is buttermilk. Um, measure out one and about two to three cups, although you're not gonna need all of it most likely, and I'll explain why later. Bottom line, this is cultured buttermilk. Um, this is you, what you buy in the store. If you're buying buttermilk from the store, it is cultured buttermilk. For those who are more extra and you like to make your own butter, the milk that is left over, the buttermilk that's left over, that is not this type of buttermilk. It is not a cultured buttermilk. It will not give you the same results. Don't use it. It needs to be a cultured buttermilk, which you can make on your own. It's super simple. One thing I forgot to mention is you will need a sifter um, to sift the flour. Again, I'll explain why later. Um, this is when I bought 25 cents at a yard sale. It's just a simple sifter. If you don't have one like this, you can use a fine mesh strainer like this one um, to kind of bounce it out like that. Um, but either way, you, do, you are gonna wanna sift it. So now that we've got everything, let's start, let's mill our wheat and let's start making those biscuits. Okay, so we now have our flour all nice and milled and now it's time to sift it now the reason why we generally do not sift our wheat is because we do like to have the bran and the germ and all of that nutritious stuff in our wheat however the reason we are sifting it is we need a lighter flour to get a lighter biscuit there's a reason your great grandma your great great grandma's recipes said to sift the flour because depending on the age, um, they were probably using more freshly milled flour, not fully sifted like the white flour you buy from the store. Now, don't worry, this will still have all the nutritious goodness, um, like the vitamin E, all the B vitamins, everything like that, and it will still retain a good amount of bran and germ. You are not gonna make store-bought flour right here. This is not an industrialized <laughs> sifter, um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now we need eight cups of flour. Now to know when you mill your grains, that one cup of grain generally equals one and a half cups of flour. So about six cups of grains will give you about eight cups of flour. Um, again, we have, um, due to Jill Winger's recipe calling for all purpose flour, I have increased the flour by about a half cup for every three cups that I used. So this is, that's why we come up to the eight cups. So again, the rule of thumb is for every two to three cups of all purpose, you increase your soft white wheat by half a cup. So that's what we're doing. So let's sift eight cups of flour. Now, do you know I'm measuring it out of here? When I say eight cups, I mean I am measuring eight cups out of here into here. I'm not measuring the sifted flour. I'm measuring what's coming out of my hopper. I hope that makes sense. Again, it's just, I don't get a knife or anything. I just make sure it's fairly level. So this one, two, three. All right, let's speed this up for y'all. All right, so hopefully you can see that. As you can see, you know, that definitely got some of the bran and germ out, but there's still specks in there. You can definitely still see some of the bran and germ in the bowl. But that's basically where I like to see it, where I see it pretty rough in the sifter. And this, I just toss. I put it either feed my chickens, throw it away, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> So 
in pretty rough there. Six. Seven. And eight. Now we have all that sifted. You can see that's the amount fairly coarse of what I took out. Hence why I say eight cups of the flour you milled, not what's sifted. Cause that's, I mean, that's like what? Hmm, a cup or so less. Um, so there we go with the sifted flour. Now it's time to cut in our butter. Okay, as you can see, there's, you know, no perfection with the cutting of the butter. You just want them in cubes. They're gonna cut up even further um, when we mix it into our flour. So let's, I'm gonna set up my Bosch, put y'all up over high so y'all can see what I'm doing with that. All right, so I got my Bosch set up here with my whisk attachments. Now again, if you don't have this, that's totally fine. Just um, cut in the butter with the pastry cutter, the two knives, but bottom line is I'll be showing you the consistency that it's in. So let's add our flour. Mm. See why you wear an apron. <laughs> okay, flour, and I go ahead and add our dry ingredients. So that's the baking powder, the sugar, and the salt. Put on a lid. Trust me, you will need it. Okay, give that a quick mix. Huh. First, let's make sure your mixer is plugged in. Mix. All right, now that that's together, now we're just gonna add in our butter. And y'all, this is such a wonderful thing. I mean, if you have this, when I discovered that I could do this in this mixer, oh, hallelujah. I mean, it saved me a good, like, 15, 20 minutes. It's amazing. I used to have to do all this by hand. All right, so you mix it, whether a pastry cutter in here, until basically that butter or the lard is kind of that pea-shaped, um, looks your, it's gonna look really rough and we'll see in a minute. Okay, so you can see right here, just wanted to stop, we are not quite done. You might think like you're done, but these, these butter chunks are still fairly large for my taste. The flour doesn't look really mixed up. You can see they're, they're kind of big. I like them a bit smaller. So we're gonna turn this back on. Now I did increase the speed up to a two, sometimes even a three for those who have a Bosch. But we're gonna do this again. Okay, so that is looking a lot better. And again, it's kind of hard to see this on video, <laughs> but let me lift this up. Okay, so you can see that's a really rough looking flower right there, but you're not seeing those super big chunks. You might see one every now and then, but it, you know, it looks pretty rough, doesn't it? It looks very coarse. Um, that's what you're going for. Again, if you've got ones, you know, that are about, you know, that big or so, that's fine. That's totally fine. You're going to be fine. All right. So now that we've got that pretty much incorporated in, if you got a Bosch, I now switch to my dough hook with the dough hook extender. If you don't have a Bosch or some sort of mixer, obviously you can do this just with a um, pretty sturdy spoon. Wooden would probably be your best bet. Okay, and then we're gonna add our buttermilk. Now here's why I said the buttermilk can vary greatly. For some reason, and I have not figured this out, that even though I a little more than doubled the flour that was originally called for, um, the buttermilk I have found does not really double, which I would think being a whole grain, it would, but it doesn't. So I have realized that it takes only maybe a cup and a half, two cups, two and a quarter cups to get to where I need. So we're gonna see how much I need today. Again, just like with the yeast spreads, your amount of flour can change each day. Same thing with your biscuit recipe. But your bottom line is you're wanting to incorporate the liquid, liquids to where it's a nice, soft 
dough and we'll see that in just a minute so you don't want to do too much it's not a super wet dough but it also isn't really sticky either so let me grab the buttermilk and we're going to start adding that in okay so here i have measured two and a half cups of buttermilk i'm going to go ahead and add yeah about a cup i, I usually like to start with a cup and then we're going to go from there so let's mix this in Okay, as you can obviously tell, not enough. That's still fairly crumbly looking, but it is starting to moisten up a little bit. I don't wanna to add too much more. I'm gonna add probably another half cup, roughly, and let's see what that does. So you do wanna give it a minute to make sure that it does incorporate, but I think that is good. And that was only a cup and a half of buttermilk to the about eight cups of flour. Now that was before I sifted it. So again, it's, it's fascinating, but let me show you. Yeah, that's feeling pretty good because you can see at least part of the dough. It is sticking together. It's not coming apart. It's not sticking to my hands, but it's soft it's yeah it's soft it's not um you know grainy like you were seeing earlier or that really coarse as you can see as i play with it 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 looks really soft like kind of that shininess in a way <laughs> to it so that is good for me time to take this out and switch these camera angles up and get it on the counter and keep on going but we're almost done again while you're doing all this make sure you're heating preheating your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, recipe description all in the bottom. All right, so I have my dough here. I have lightly, lightly <laughs> dusted my counter with a little bit of flour. Now it's gonna come out where it's kind of chunky like that. That's fine, don't freak out. <laughs> um, it easily, the point is, is you easily wanna make sure that it does, you know, that you can mold it back together. So we're gonna want this, we're gonna want our rolling pin. This is my great grandmother's. I am thrilled to have it and it'll knock anyone out. <laughs> and um, you wanna obviously dust your rolling pin. And now we're gonna roll this out. Now, here is a huge difference that it um, breaks this recipe away from whenever you use regular all-purpose flour or whatever. Um, this took me a bit, a few tries to figure out, but we are gonna roll it out to where it's about, oh, an inch, um, maybe a little less, like three quarters of an inch thick. All right, and you see that it's breaking up a little bit? That's, that's fine, you can work it in together. It'll work, it'll work in. Okay. Okay, so that is about, hmm, maybe half an inch actually. Bottom line is whatever you do, you're gonna want it to be fairly consistent. Okay, and so we have our dough. We're not gonna cut it yet. We are then going to want to fold it in half, like that. Roughly get it in half. Now gently, gently press it together. Don't add flour on the top before you fold it over, otherwise the layers aren't gonna stick. And you just wanna gently, very, very gently, just press it together. That's it, okay? And I have found that whenever I do it this way, you're really gonna get those sky high biscuits. Where whenever I would just roll it out, and even if I did it a bit thicker, they wouldn't really fluff up very high, rise up very high. Um, these are the other things, these are great. I love them, got them off of Amazon. These are my biscuit cutters. And they come in a variety of sizes here, like little Russian dolls. <laughs> There's four to a pack. They were very inexpensive. Um, I have only ever used um, this one. This is, I um, believe, the two inch cutter, and this is the size I like my biscuits. But it's nice that it comes in other options. I highly recommend biscuit cutters because it gives a clean cut. For a while, I was just using the rim of a glass, but I found that it kind of, um, when I cut down, it kind of like seals the edge, preventing it from rising as high. So you can use a glass to cut it, but make sure it's as thin as possible because you can see how super thin this is. And this, this slices right through a nice clean cut um, as opposed to 
the the edge, uh, the bottom of a the top of a glass. Again, use what you have, but definitely. But I have noticed that, and this was a great investment. I think it was literally like twelve bucks for the whole set. Again, I'll link it in the description below. So you're going to take it. I just get a little bit of flour on it, and then start cutting through the double layers. If it sticks, that's fine. Just gently push it out. Now again, you wanna make sure that they're all roughly about the same thickness. That way they cook more evenly. If you have some that are super thin, some are that are super thick, they're not gonna cook as evenly in the oven. So you can see those are good. Now we just start over, mush it all together. All right, and we do just want a nice grease pan that we can just go ahead and put these on. They don't need to be touching each other. I find they rise just fine without them touching. And let's do it all over again. Okay, and whenever you get to that very end of the biscuit <laughs> that's kind of not really able to make one, I just like to roll it out as normal, fold it over, same thing, and then I just try my best to form it in a cute little biscuit shape. Again, this will just always be, you're always gonna have that one wonky looking biscuit, but that's okay, it still tastes good. All right, so, well, let's make it a little bit prettier there. Okay, just kind of pat around. Again, be careful not to smash it down. Just kind of gently mold the sides. And that's good enough. All right, so here we have our biscuits. We just need to put them in the oven. Uh, again, 450 degree preheated oven for about 12 to 15 minutes until you start to see a golden on top. Now, just know if you have an oven like mine, I do not have an above burner. So they don't quite get golden on the top. If that's the case, feel free to stick them in your broiler for about maybe 30 seconds. Watch it, <laughs> you'll burn them um, if you want that golden top. But otherwise, most ovens, until it's golden, and you know you can obviously tell that it's cooked fairly well in the center. Um, put it in the middle of your oven. If you put it on the bottom like mine, it will burn on the bottom. So middle rack, 12 to 15 minutes, just watch it. Um, and I'll see you soon. All right, and here they are. Look at them. Oh, they look amazing. And they are definitely done. Now the last step is to get you some more butter, <laughs> melted butter. And then we're just gonna brush it right on top of these bad boys. Oh my, I'm so excited. I melted about um, three tablespoons of butter. That looks to be a bit too much, as you can see. Probably could have only done two. Yep, definitely could have done two tablespoons, but hey, we'll slap on some more butter to these bad boys. Waste not, want not. Mm, look at that. And now let's plate them. This is really how I like to serve them at the table, the ugly one goes on the bottom and you can see how they look beautiful on the bottom as well. There we go. Oh, that's my favorite one, I think. And look at that beautiful plate of biscuits. Oh, let's zoom in. These are so delicious. And as you can see, they break open. The beauty of having the seam is now they break open so easily. So check that out. Now let's slather this up with butter where I'm gonna actually have some coffee with it and let's join me at the table. So there you have it. As you can see, I've already eaten some of my biscuit. It is so good. Oh man, just so good. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below and please remember to subscribe. And if you love freshly milled grains like I do, and please check out this video right here with my go-to yeast bread recipe that's perfect for your sandwiches and just a good everyday loaf. And if you're new to milling grains, check out this video right here, all about where I source my grains, how to start milling, 
all those beginner questions. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.